she wrote about very strong women, didn't she, mm. in, in most of her books. And I think that's the strength that she has shown, um, in, not only in her own life as how she dealt with her life, but also dealt with cancer for six and a were half years. You, were you surprised that she had kept it a secret for all that time? Literally, her daughters knew and two close friends, not even her, Joan. She didn't even tell that's Joan. That's right. L literally, you're, you're right. Her three daughters and a couple, a married couple, knew about it. That was all for six and a half years. Um, I believe, and I say this up front, I believe that whatever people are dealing with, whether it's cancer or MS or diabetes or whatever, that that person should have the freedom to battle whatever way they want to do yeah. that. So therefore, I've heard a little bit of, not criticism today, but people saying, wasn't it selfish of her not to let Joan know and things like that. I don't believe that. I think that the person at the centre of it has the right to fight that battle. So, yeah. so I think she I showed... I do too, do you but then I can understand as well how some family members would go, but you didn't give me enough time to spend mm. with you because I didn't mm. know, you know, maybe I want, the, you know, Joan might have spent a lot more time with her because I'm sure they're so busy mm. that they didn't really How, how did your family deal with the whole um, aspect of cancer? Well, with, with Bernie, when she was first diagnosed, she didn't want anyone to know, as in the media or anything. And um, it was funny because I was just about to go into the Big Brother house and all of that and I wasn't allowed to tell anyone. And, and it's a really hard thing because sometimes you want to you know, to tell people how you're feeling. Um, and she kept it secret from Erin for a long time, her, her daughter, daughter mm. because she said, you know, she's so much heartache to face in the future anyway when I'm, when I'm going that I want her to enjoy the, these years. But at the same time, there was times being a typical teenager where if Erin was naughty or being cheeky, it was hard as her sister not to go, your mum's really ill, stop being mm. horrible and do as you're told, but you couldn't, mm. you know. But she did tell her in the end, and I think Erin was grateful in the end that she did, because then, you know, mm. she really made the effort to spend quality mm. time with her mum. Did, um, did Karen keep it secret for well, quite a long time? Well, you see, the parallels here, are those different age groups, but parallels are enormous, because Karen's battle was seven, just over seven years. And at the very beginning, now these are her words, because I know a lot of people want to talk about their cancer and don't mind talking about it, but Karen said, I do want to be seen as a cancer victim and I don't want to be defined by cancer. So the people go, how are you? You know, she wanted to continue. And in fact, to the point that she would say, don't tell me, you know, anything about it. Don't give me any diagnosis. Just tell me what I have to do. That was her attitude. Yeah. So as her mother, I always thought, if anybody finds out about this, it will never be yeah. through me. And it was difficult because, you know, we might be talking about fibs and lies later on. I was, you know, I was covering all the time. Um, but that's the way she wanted it, and I really respected that. And that kept her tenacity and strength going because she was going to beat it. And even at the very end, and this is the bit I don't understand, both with Jackie and with my daughter. My daughter was shopping for clothes and jewellery the weekend that she died, OK? I can't believe that Jackie was sitting here doing an L.A. trip doing, promoting her book, doing all of that, and yet she was so close to death. I always thought that if you were that close to death and having had cancer for that period of time, that something would have said to you, stay at home, mm. be but safe. Think sometimes you know? I think that's that's that when your whole life going. has been defined by it, or well, the last six or seven years of your <laughs> life, and, and chemo and feeling lousy, that sometimes you just crave to do normal things. Of course. Yeah. yeah but then absolutely. you've just said the words feeling lousy. I can't imagine, I mean, I hate yeah. doing the LA trip even when I'm feeling fit and well. So I think yeah. she was incredible that she was able to make that last journey. And there is something yeah. that happens, I don't know where it comes from, maybe it's from up above, whatever, that gives you the strength at the end, and Jackie had that. Yeah. And don't you fear she's of the generation as well? We're, we're all social media now and we share everything. She's of a generation where you didn't... Mm, talk about private. things outside of your yeah. family. And we wish her family well. Well, we, yeah. we were very honoured that, that this was the last show that she did here and it was really great to have her on. And, of course, our thoughts and love to um, Joan and, and all the family. Um, you know, we, we know you watch the show and so we send you all our love and it was great to see her. Um, so many comments from you already, over 1,500 lovely messages already. Uh, Doreen says, what a dignified lady. No melodrama about her illness. How courageous. Goodbye, Jackie. Oh, what a credit you've been. You know, we want this to be a celebration about Linda as well, didn't we? Because we're, it's very hard for us. <coughs> she was such fun and so full of energy and verve. Mm. We don't want this to be too gloomy today, but we miss her so much and very sad. We miss her already so much. Mm. Um, and it's so hard not to be sad. Yeah. 